As we have our ring announcer, German Novello, introducing the fighters for the third fight in the prelim, we have Josh Caballero. He'll be going up against Diego Romero Verde. That's right, and this is the highlight match of the prelims because unfortunately uh, we've been told that James Wallace uh, weighed in late and the Mexicans were not happy with that situation so that match was you know, taken off the card. So this is very important guys, you know, to, to all the fighters, you have to make sure that you are there for the set weigh-in time and follow all the necessary procedures and make sure you're on weight, right? Yes, and, and, and it is understandable that, that, that they pulled out because th this is a contact sport. It is, it is a sport in which uh, you're putting yourself on the line and you don't want to give an unfair advantage to your opponent. That's right, that's the situation. And then we have here Diego El Torito, Romero Verde. This is, will be his third match. He's 0-2 with his record. You know, um, he's from Kukulkan Warriors from Merida, Yucatan. And his opponent is Josh Caballero from Mind Matter Academy. Uh, that is also in San Pedro. San Pedro as well. So it, it, it seems that San Pedro has a very vibrant uh, MMA scene because yes. given the amount of, of gyms that, that, that cater to this sport, uh, we, we've seen that, that uh, Dawson Spit Fighters ha has been featured and now we have Mind Matter Academy. So, so what can you tell us about that, Israel? Mind Matter Academy is Bryce Peterson, who is our headline in bout for the championship match later tonight. Uh, he's from San Pedro and he uh, is a very good fighter. He's, uh, he has a 2 0 record. And he's been working with Josh Caballero. So Josh Caballero works with Bryce and they've been training together and uh, to get them prepared, themselves prepared for these matches. And right? just, uh, Josh, just like Wyatt, he is making his debut tonight. That's right. It's his first match. You know, these guys. Uh, they said, I want to step out, I want to get in there and do this, you know. As we await Josh Caballero's entrance into the ring, uh, this is a bantamweight bout uh, with a weight limit of 135 pounds. Uh, this is our last amateur bout. This is the last amateur bout. This is the last prelims bout because uh, James Wallace will scratch off the card. So, um, this is the highlight bout, you know, Josh is making his debut, you know, he's, he's looking to get a win, he's looking out there to impress the San Pedro Cow, he's a San Pedro kid and he wants to get the win. Josh fighting out of the red corner, while uh, Diego fighting out of the blue corner. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. And there we see Josh getting inspected by the referees and the corner people and getting ready to come into the cage. Our referee for the night race, Christian Gullit. Our judges, Cody Agas, Jamie Smith, and Martin Dawson. So, um, Israel, tell us a bit more about Josh Caballero. Uh, have you seen him in the gym? What, what can you tell us? Uh, what type of fighter is he? Uh, Josh is a very strong fighter, you know, he's very stocky, you know, so he, he's looking to use a lot of takedowns, he's looking to take it to the ground, you know, and do ground and sound, right? So that's the, that's the situation, that's the scenario, I think. Uh, he just walked out to the locker room, I think he must have forgotten his mouthpiece or his cup. <laughs> that's very important, you cannot get into the cage without that, that helps protect your teeth. Uh, and all the important parts right up here. Yes, uh, those, those are very important uh, tools of the trade. And, and one of the more important things that we must emphasize is the safety of the fighters. So uh, you cannot partake in these fights without having the necessary tools uh, in order to practice your craft. That's right. That's right. It's for the protection of the fighters. Yes. Uh, one of the things at Pro UFC, you know, that we take very seriously is making sure we the fighters are protected at all times. You know, we have doctors in the, uh, at, like at Cape Chide. Uh, thank you to, the, to Dr. Novello, Kate Novello from New York. You know, he flew all the way from New York to be the there to make sure the safety of the fighters. And, and Israel, I was, um, I was listening uh, or I was watching the press conference that was, uh, that was held on, on Wednesday uh, and it was featured on, on TNC. 
So we ah, also wanted to talk and, about and you were discussing the number of, of MME agents pounds. in the Leeds community. Can you talk a bit more about that? Definitely, definitely. I mean, like I said, it's a growing sport. You know, um, the, the longest standing club is Prevail Common Club, where I have trained, you know, as well in Belize City. That started in 2012, you know, with some guys, Joel and James Smith, they put together a team and they have been competing, competing since 2012. You know, other than that, there are other smaller um, clubs around. There's Martin Dawson, who has also been doing a lot of work with MMA in Belize and in San Pedro. You know, there's now Mind Mother Academy in San Pedro with Bryce Peterson. There's also Juan Card in Belmopan with the Belize Judo and Jiu-Jitsu Academy, he focuses on Judo and Jiu-Jitsu, which also helps you get prepared for MMA and the groundwork, right? In our in Joao, Silvino Riverol is also working with some guys. So the sport is going ar ar around the country, and we're looking to establish something here in Cayo as well, right? Very good, and I know that you guys are um, really pushing for MMA, and not only uh, here in Belize, but you guys are aiming for, for Central America to really you know, take over Central America. That's right, right. The region is right for the taking. There's a lot of talent, as we can see. These guys come from, from Merida and from uh, Campeche, places like that, Cancun, and they are really, they have talent. We have also Guatemalans, you know, Jonathan Chutan is the actual uh, 145 featherweight champion of Pro FC right now. Um, uh, of course, Belize has a lot of talent. You know, and we haven't even tapped into the Caribbean as yet. With Jamaica, Trinidad, there's also a lot of talent there. Yes, there is significant room for growth when it comes to the sport. Uh, the sport is only about well, when we we got introduced to the UFC. Uh, that's about 26 years ago mm -hmm. and and the sport has grown uh, leaps and bounds it's it's now a billion dollar industry and and it is something that uh, Belizeans in particular seem very interested in and, and, and it and it is a very it's it's a very good sport it's it, it's a sport that teaches us uh, discipline it, it teaches us uh, uh, how to protect ourselves and 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 it is also at the end of the day a form of entertainment and, and it's good entertainment and although I'm not happy to say it but it, it's a sport that, that that is even overtaking boxing so <laughs> MMA is, is is something to be reckoned with something that 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 we can look forward to and it's it's going to, to go here in Belize. That's right, and there we have it. Uh, Josh Cabrera is finally in there. I think he has his mouthpiece on now, and he's getting ready to get the match started. He is fighting in front of his hometown crowd as he's an island boy. Referee charge for this match is Mr. Christian Gray. This match is scheduled for three rounds of three minutes each. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get this fight going! Here we go, Javier. Calling in is at the tail of the tape. Uh, Josh is 23. Diego is 35 feet 5. Um, everything seems uh, to be set for the weight. They're both even and we're about to get started. So it's round number one in our featured preliminary bout between Belizean Josh Caballero versus Mexican Diego El Torito Romero Verde. And there's some feeling, there's a feeling out process in the first round way. They're trying to establish their range. Um, they come in for a clinch and clean strikes are looking to be landed, but nothing yet. Some very good action here in the, four, uh, in, in the first round as, as both of them have been able to land some very good strikes and, and there's an eye poke for Romero. No, Romero is calling an eye poke, but the referee said continue. So Josh, in my opinion, should continue and take the advantage of that, right? Whether it was a legit eye poke or not, that's just the nature of the game. The referee is in control and you got to listen to the referee at all times. Uh, and similar to boxing, you must protect yourself at all times. Uh, and, and you must listen to the referee's instructions. So unless the referee calls break, then you continue with, 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 the, with the match. It looked like a job to me. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, uh, you know, with the, with the MMA gloves, the hands are open and it can be that it's extended, you know. But it looked like a clean job to me. Uh, Josh is there, there in the cage. You know, he's looking to land strikes, you know. Um, and that is illegal, holding on to the holding wires. Holding on the cage is illegal. For, as, for an advantage. Right. That's right, uh, so the ref will bring that to their attention and if they, they, they continue doing it, he will do the tough one. 
Now let's see what happens here because I think Josh expended a lot of energy in that, in that first minute and a half or there about, right? Yes. yes. Um, and now let's see if Diego comes in and gets aggressive himself, right? Bo trying to land that uh, front heel kick. Yeah. Josh looks confident to me. I mean, I know uh, he's uh, his debut, but these guys have impressed me with the way they just come in and are able to feel around the cage and walk around and put together their stuff, right? And walking for the first time in that cage is nothing easy. The adrenaline is rushing through your veins, through your blood, through your head, and, and you know, you have to know how to compose yourself because That's then right. you're going up against an opponent uh, that is bringing the fight to you. That's right, and there, you know, Josh is on the back foot now, you know, he's circling around. Uh, Diego is looking to land low kicks and calf kicks. I can tell you from experience, those kicks hurt. <laughs> if you don't check those kicks, you're not going to be able to walk quite soon. And what we've seen so far is that these guys mean business. Uh, the three bouts have been action-packed. Uh, there hasn't been a, a, a moment in which uh, there has been a lull to the fight. They, they've they've gone, gone out aggressively. They've tried to land. And here we see Romero landing some very significant, significant strikes. Significant strikes, yeah. Uh, it looks to me like Josh is tired and he's trying to find uh, time to rest, right? He's looking probably, he's thinking that the, the round is about to be done and he's looking to get some rest during that break. Yeah. As we, six minutes remaining in round number one. And that is the end of round number one. And you see, pulling out his mouthpiece immediately, that is a sign that he got tired here in round number one. Um, that's right. I think uh, Diego was putting together a better striking at the end of that round. You know, Josh had a flurry there. Uh, Javier, how would you score that? It was probably the most difficult round to score uh, so far here tonight. I would give the round uh, to Romero, given that he landed the more significant strikes. I, I like what Josh did uh, at the beginning of, of the round, but I think Romero closed it off uh, in, in better fashion. And that's because Josh slowed down in the middle of the round. Like I said, he used a lot of energy right, to, to do the first explosive movement, the first explosive strike. He was trying to take it to the ground. Wrestling takes a lot of you. Being against a cage, trying to take this opponent down takes a lot of you and it wears down your cardio. That's just the truth. Yes, Israel, it, it, it expends a lot of energy and, and it's something, it's, it's very difficult to recover. And, and cardio is one of the more important things in, in MMA, uh, being able to, to maintain that pace. And, and so far it has been a very high paced match. Let's see if, if the one minute rest uh, gives Josh that, that second win. And, and let's see what he can do here in round number two. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, there's also the weight cut factor. I know that Josh needed to cut some weight to get to the 135 pound limit. So how you recover from that says a lot, right? In MMA, weight cutting is a, is a big factor, right? Because you dehydrate yourself and then you have to slowly rehydrate yourself yes. to your natural weight. And you just saw him just before the start of round two taking, uh, inhaling deeply. He's looking to set up his range with the kicks now. Uh, you know, I think he's realized that he has to change it up a bit, Javier. You know, the, the exposure and the striking won't get uh, Diego out of that match as we saw. He was able to recover and recover well. And Caballero has shown that he has a very good chin. Uh, Romero landed some very significant strikes. He landed a right cross and a left hook that, that landed flush on, on Josh. But he was able to absorb the, the, the punches quite well. So I'm, I'm very impressed by, by, by his chin. Yeah, it's, this is where the adrenaline dump comes into play. The first round is over. The feeling out process is over. That dump is now happening. You see him a little bit hesitant here. He's trying to set it up, but he has felt the power. Diego has gained his respect. So what would Josh need to do to close the distance here, Israel? In my opinion, he needs to set up more leg kicks, right? To close the distance and throw combinations, one, two, jabs, and come in with a leg kick. And that will be the opening for him to, for a take down. Javier. So a very good start here for, for Caballero in, in the second round. Uh, he, he is setting the tempo to the fight. Uh, particularly here oh, in the there's second. A, there's a good, sorry Javier to cut it off, there's a good uh, right by uh, Josh Caballero, uh, but, and they're looking to exchange strikes now, Javier. And as you can see, Diego coming back with that straight right to the jaw of Josh Caballero. 
This is where it gets interesting, guys. The guys are starting to get tired. The stripes, your hands become heavy. Oh, he's turning his back again, Javier. That's never a good sign. That's never a good thing. Especially against a striker like Romero. Romero has shown that he has a very good uh, striking skill set. He has been able to land a very good right cross here in the second. Uh, and Caballero needs to do some some adjustments if he wants to win this fight. Yeah, he definitely he's just, in my opinion, just stalling. He's moving around. He's trying to get his, his energy back, right? Uh, before you can do something explosive. Explosive movements cost you. And that's what we saw that happen here. But when you're, you're tired as well, wouldn't it make sense to try to take the fight to the ground? Exactly. That's the best place to be on top because then you have gravity on your side, right? You're able to weigh down on your opponent. You're able to rain down ground and pound, right? Uh, right? Yes, and you can see he's focusing a lot on his mouthpiece. And if you, if you look at, uh, at Diego, Diego is not opening his mouth as much as Josh is opening his mouth. That's right, because it's, it's you know, second round, 10 seconds left in the second round. He's tired now. He's looking for breather. He's trying to come gain his composure back. But at this point, he needs to go for something. He needs to change it up if he has intentions of winning this match. Well, round number two has just come to an end. And uh, very interesting round number two. Pretty close, but yet I am going to give round number two for Diego as he aggressed, he brought the fight to, uh, to Caballero. This is where the judging criteria comes into place. Javier, there was not so much effective striking, but there was very good cage control by Diego. You know, he was moving forward, he was moving around, and he was looking to land one eight eight eight, you know? So I would, I, I would compare with Ray, that's a 10-9 round for Diego Romero, El Tonto. Yes, I agree with you guys. I also gave the round to, to Romero. Uh, he was the more effective of the two. And, and when, when it comes to judging rounds, uh, the way I look at it is, who would I rather be during a given round? So in, in this instance, if I was fighting, I would have rather been Romero in this instance. He, he was more com more composed. Um, he dictated the pace uh, in round number two, and, and you know it shows you that he have a, a a little bit of experience in the cage. Is when you know you can rely on your past experience and say I've been here, I've been done this before. What do I do in this situation of it? And that has been one of the major teams tonight. We saw it in the first fight in which. Uh, uh, the guy with, with, with the greater amount of experience, uh, Roberto Gongora, was able to get the victory. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing here that uh, Diego Romero uh, has been more composed uh, during the first two rounds. And, and he is winning the, the fight in, in, in my eyes. Then uh, he's more calm. And uh, I think Josh knows that he has to do something right or else this match is slipping out of his hand. There's a better crowd out there in San Pedro now, I see. I mean, the bleachers are getting full. There are people in the VIP section. So I'm glad that people are out there enjoying this atmosphere because it's quite an atmosphere when you're ringside and looking at this exciting one. Most definitely, the fans have come out tonight uh, to witness Pro FC2 Island take over. A big combination there by Romero, but he missed. Josh was able to duck and get out of the way. So he's... he's Showboating. I don't know why he would do that at this point in the match. He needs to figure out to do something right now. Javier. Yes, uh, I, I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to get the crowd into the match. He's trying to feed off of their energy uh, because he needs to do something big in order to win this fight. That's right. He needs to look for something big. I think he, a, a, a big takedown and some ground and pound will do it for him. There's a good leg kick. That's how you start. Let's set up the leg kicks. Let's set up the striking. Jab, one, twos and you know, look for an entrance into a pit bar. Yes, he, if he wants to win the fight, he, he has to go through the fire. He needs, to, he needs to bite down, try to see how he can close the distance between himself and Romero. So he has his work cut out for him here tonight. Uh, he only has uh, less, well, about a minute and 20 seconds to go to this fight. So he needs to, he needs to throw everything uh, he has if he wants to get the big W here tonight. He definitely needs to get aggressive. I don't know if his partner told him, but I think, in my opinion, he might be down two rounds. The first round was a bit hard to score, so at best it would be 1-1, one, one, right? So he needs to do something to say, you know, to put his stamp on this round, right? Uh, and he's not showing us uh, no sense of urgency so far here in round number three as uh, 
my, my good friend there, uh, Diego, continues he to he, aggress the he, fight. He landed a good shot just now. It, it looked like a clean shot to me, Javier, and those shots are adding up on the judges' scorecard. And I understand, I understand Gomorra's hesitation because Romero has landed some very significant strikes. He has shown that he, is, he has a very good strike game. And, and it is very difficult to decipher such a fight. It's very difficult to close the distance. So right. that, that's what's going on. Uh, in my opinion, what changed the course of the match is when Josh felt the power of Diego. He felt the power with that combination and he said, you know what, I got to stay my distance. I will keep away. Again, Diego with the combination strikes. Uh, and it's the last 10 seconds of the bout. Diego was looking to put forward combination as well, and I think he needed to come in and, 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 and finish the match, put a stamp on the match. So it's an interesting round. Let's see um, how the judges will score that round there, Javier. That was a very good third bout. Uh, it was very entertaining. entertaining. Romero uh, showed that he has a very good strike uh, skill set. Uh, uh, James Caballero also showed that, that, that he is uh, developing his uh, his fight game i don't think he did enough to win the fight tonight but it was a good fight nonetheless yeah i mean it, it's showing that these guys are able to go in there and withstand three rounds of hard MMA action they don't win but it's not about winning or losing in this it's about gaining experience gaining experience becoming better going back to the drawing board and making sure that you're good for the next bout, right? Most definitely, Israel. I'm sitting here and I was thinking the same thing that experience, um, you know, as these guys move on will come and you will be seeing better action, talking about Josh, talking about Wyatt, you know, you'll be seeing great things from these guys in the future. That's what I believe. And there we have the best part of the sport is a show of respect between the corners. You know, MMA is still very much a, ma a martial art, and that's one of the aspects of the game that I like, Javier, to respect after the match is done, because you've been with this opponent in locked up in a cage, you know, trying to knock your head off, and it's only fair that we show each other respect at the end of the match. Yes, and, and that has been displayed in all three bouts. We, we, we have seen that all fighters uh, have that uh, respect uh, taught to them, and, and it is a good starting point. Let's go up to our ring announcer, German Novello, with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of 30, uh, three minutes each, sorry, all three judges scored this bout, 30-27, a unanimous decision for the winner, Diego El Torrito Romero. There we have it, Ray. I had it the same. Uh, I had it in favor of Romero by that same margin. So a very good uh, win for Romero here today. And this is for first winner. Yes, and in impressive fashion. And so, you know, these guys are young in the sports of MMA, but if they keep on, on, on the track, they will be great. Ah, uh, there we go. We, we, this is the uh, main prelim match, so we'll do an interview with Chairman Avelo. Mano a mano, ¿por qué decidiste usar ese estilo de pelea en vez de usar abajo el, el, el mat? Eh, yo creo que cada, cada peleador tiene su estilo. Este, pues yo preferí llevarlo en esta ocasión en, el, en, en la parte de arriba porque pues, fue mi, mi estrategia. Muy bien, muchas gracias y felicidades. Diego El Torito Romero by unanimous decision 30 27. His first win of his young career in MMA. 
That's right. We, and these guys come all the way from Merigala, Yucatan. They traveled many hours. You know, there was some issues at the border that they had to face. So it's all very challenging to them to, for them to come all the way here and put on this kind of effort. It says a lot about the training and the background that they have, have here. Yeah, it shows a, a passion that they, the passion that they have for the sport and the dedication that it requires. Uh, it requires you to travel long miles. It, it requires you to train long hours. But at the end of the day, it's, it's for the love of the sport. And, that's and, and, and they show that, that they have that love for it. So. And we just want to remind you that coming up uh, will be the co-main event. The co-main event is coming up, and that will be Bryce Lionheart Peterson as he will be going up against Lionel Bad Boy. That's... Setina Araujo. <laughs> yes, uh, and he's fighting out of Mexico. And then the main event will be Jeremy Cesar Mahon going up against Fernando Samurai a reveler so you don't want to miss that what we'll do we'll take a break and when we come back we'll have more pro fc2 island takeover action we'll be back <laughs> 